bringing you key insights, tips, and advice from the brightest minds in the Canadian franchising industry. This is the Franchise Canada Chats Podcast. Welcome to the Franchise Canada Chats Podcast, where we take you into the world of franchising. Our interviews are with franchisors, franchisees, and industry leaders who give On The Pulse expert advice and insights. I'm your co-host, Trisha, and this is Season 2, Episode 20. And we are speaking with Kim Chapman from Oxford Learning Center. So Oxford Learning is a tutoring service that helps develop thinking and learning skills for students of every age that's preschool to university. I know, wild, right? Uh, With over 35 years as a proven franchise system and more than 100 locations across the nation, Oxford Learning truly makes a difference. So Kim's gonna talk about what she does. She's gonna just talk about um, why she decided to invest in Oxford Learning, the most rewarding part about being a franchisee with that system, uh, what keeps her motivated and inspired on her franchise journey, even during the difficult times, and a whole lot more. This is a great episode, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, Kim. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. Thanks for joining us today. Perfect. Thank you. So you are a franchisee with Oxford Learning. I am. Um, what is your background and, background and experience? What drew you to franchising and the Oxford uh, business model in particular? So I actually have a background in education. I have my master's in education, and I have worked with kids for as long as I can remember. Um, I really, I I started as a teacher first and foremost, and uh, I ended up kind of really liking the way that Oxford Learning creates uh, their business model and their mission and their their values. I really appreciate the way that they can go in and we can go in and figure out how to fix what's going on with the student and, and go from there and really create a great learning environment for kids, which in the school system doesn't necessarily always happen, which is quite unfortunate. Mm-hmm. So, so how did you hear about Oxford Learning exactly? Like, so, well, I actually was working as a teacher, but I was only supplying way back in the the early, well, I guess late 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, there was not a lot of teaching jobs, and so I needed something to kind of supplement and get more experience in the classroom. So I ended up applying as a teacher to another center, and. I I loved it right off the bat. It was such a great environment. I worked four nights a week there, and uh, we had it was just such a great learning environment. And uh, once that I, once I found that I liked that so much, I ended up actually taking a, a management position with another center, and then another center, and then I finally approached the uh, the owner of the current center that I'm in, Guelph, the, my only center um, that I was looking for looking to buy, and suddenly I was a franchisee, and that's kind of how. How that happened. Wow. wow, that's great. So how long have you been how long have you been franchising? I've been a franchisee. I'm just coming up on my five year anniversary and I've been in the Oxford Learning System since two thousand and eight. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. when you kind of thought, you know what, I want to go and become a franchisee, did you how did that work? Because I guess you knew the head office staff, I'm assuming you kind of had those contacts in place. Was it a, maybe a easier process than for for you than for someone who had no experience with Oxford before? So I literally had no experience with being a business owner. I had no experience with, I didn't really even know what franchising was. Um, Mm -hmm. So I was lucky to go into a system that they're very supportive of their franchisees. Uh, The franchisor is amazing um, Mm -hmm. and gives me a lot of support that way. Uh, But I didn't know that when I, when I purchased the business, I had no idea. I went into it completely blind. I got myself a lawyer and an accountant who kind of knew what they were talking about and specialized in franchises. And I really had to do my homework to make sure that this was the right decision for me. Um, mm-hmm. And it was. I was very, I'm very, very lucky. But I, that was a huge challenge for me, to be honest. I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know, right? So I, I feel like having 
this kind of franchisor who comes in with a, a great document that I can understand um, in terms of the franchise agreement. Um, I had to go through that. And even that, some of the language was over my head. So I had to do my homework on that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that was really, really great for me because I learned a lot. It was it, the first two years. I mean, were, was such a steep learning curve. I had no idea. I didn't know how to bookkeep. I didn't know how to, I didn't, I didn't know how to use a payment <laughs> processing a a purchase, uh, what do you call that thing, a, a terminal. I had no idea. I had no idea about any of that stuff. So it's a big, big learning curve for me, and it was a great challenge, but I really rose to it, and it was lucky for me. What were your hours like yeah. when you first started? So it sounds like you were pretty busy. I worked like a crazy person. Um, I still work like a crazy person, actually, but I love it. And that's kind of the big difference for me. This, to me, is more of a passion than just a job. I really enjoy being here. The center is such a great place. I have great staff, um, but I do work a lot. Probably not everyone wants to work like I work, Um, but I usually work from 8.30 or 9 in the morning until 7 at night. Um, I do work some weekends as well, although I'm trying to pull back a little bit more than that on that right now. I'm trying to do a better job at that, but I do work a lot. Um, And it's, it's, I know it's a good problem to have, but I, we tripled our enrollment and our, our income within uh, a year of, well, two years with what we were, you know, what we started with. And I do work a lot. So, but my passion turned around to that success for sure. So I do enjoy it, and I kind of feel like I have to defend it sometimes, but yeah, I, I work a lot. <laughs> you know what? I think that something I've noticed since working with the CFA is that all franchisees, all business owners have the same mentality. Yeah, They all work a lot, but it's just something that they love so much that it's almost, it doesn't phase them. They're just so passionate about it. So yeah. I think you're in good company when it comes to that. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you 100%. If you like what you do, it doesn't feel like you're putting in time. You yeah. want to be there. I want to be here. And I mean, I have benefits that, that outweigh it too, right? I travel when I want. I have a good team in place that I can worry, you know, I, I worry less when I'm gone. Um, and there, I feel like I'm really approachable so that they can, contact me if anything's going awry or whatever is happening. I, that to me is super important to make sure that I've got the proper staff in place and I can walk away if I need to. You know, if I'm not feeling well for a day, I don't come in. It, it, th- those kinds of things. I mean, I work hard, but I play hard too. So, mm-hmm. How big is your staff now? Um, I have actually, we just went through a crazy transition where I lost a lot of um, long-term staff. I, I have a lot of people that left at the end of the summer or at the beginning of the summer. So we've mm-hmm. just gone through a big process where we've hired about five new ki- new teachers um, or new staff. But uh, we have, I think we're at 13 or 14 staff right now, not including me. Um, so th- that's kind of nice too, that uh, we've got a really good big staff. We have uh, a very big high school uh, student contingent here. So I have a lot more high school math and science teachers. Um, mm-hmm. And then we have a big French component here as well. So that's kind of nice, too. We've got lots of French teachers. This year I got smart and hired uh, French and math teachers that can do both. <laughs> so, oh, <good. laughs> that was smart. <laughs> so the Oxford Learning Educators, I don't know if that's what you call them, but educators, are they, do they have to actually be teachers? Or what's the process when you hire, the, hire your staff for that? So I tend to not actually hire certified teachers, even though I am one, and I will hire them if they're really, really good, but they are so used to teaching to a classroom and not Mm -hmm. on that individualized basis that I honestly end up hiring a lot more uh, master's students or people that have just finished school um, that are looking for extra hours, that kind of thing. Um, They need to have a passion when they walk through the door. They have to be interested in helping kids. They have to be able to adhere to the way that we teach, which is a a lot different than um, than the school system. I mean, we teach learning learning skills and and ju- not just curriculum. It's it's really learning how to get into the nitty gritty of how they learn and then developing skills out of that. So I, I do tend to hire. Um, I, t- I also tend to hire young. Um, I'm looking for people that have a lot of energy and uh, and and looking for people that have the same values that I do really mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah and is Oxford learning and sorry I keep on these questions just keep coming to my yeah. head sure, um, yeah yeah <laughs> your location or are the locations open year-round or is it only during the school year 
So we're open all year long. Uh, we run summer programs as well where we do day camps. This year was our first time. So we just, I should kind of give you a background of my, uh, of my center. We just moved to a new location. We went from 1,300 square feet to almost 2,900 square feet. I think we're just over 2,900. Um, mm-hmm. So we tripled in space because we grew uh, so quickly that we just had nowhere to put all these kids. So mm-hmm. we have this great space now um, that's in the south end of Guelph. It's beautiful, lots of windows and everything, and we want to make use of it during the day as well as in the evening during the summer. So we actually offer day camps. We did STEM camps all summer long. We ran five weeks of camps. Um, So we did Lego robotics. We did science and engineering and arts and drama and uh, really had a a lot of fun this summer doing uh, doing some really cool activities and having a good time and just kind of uh, getting out into this the nitty gritty of the science and the math and and engineering and all sorts of stuff. So it was it was really cool. So yes, we are open all year long. Um, we just close that down usually over holiday, major holidays and that kind of thing. So yeah, cool, awesome. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna kind of, kind of rewind this a little bit because I'm. I was kind of curious about um, how you went from. I know you explained that you went from being a teacher to, you know, running a franchise for the first time. Um, were there any sort of skills, I guess, that helped you, like from your teaching experience that you've carried over into, um, like you, that you you've been using as a business owner, basically. So that's kind of an interesting question too. I, I don't feel like a lot of my education skills are needed, more my leadership skills. So, you know, when you're running a business, you have to be the the person, the go-to person, especially with a number of staff. And I have to be knowledgeable about everything. So I read a lot. I read a lot of um, kind of self-help motivational books. Um, Stephen Covey, which like the principal-centered leadership that book, honestly, was probably one of the best books I've ever done. Same with the highly, uh, the Seven Absolutely. Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, those books to me are like a Bible. I use those pretty frequently, especially the leadership component, because I really feel like I, that's something that I've been working on is my communication skills and making sure that I'm upfront with my staff about what I'm looking for, my expectations. It's funny because we just went to a big training, um, what we call the center director retraining um, Mm -hmm. at our head office last week. And I came away with pages and pages and pages of notes on things that I want to work on and that, that kind of support from a franchisor is so good because now I feel re-energized to walk into the center. Not that I ever really had a problem about being energized, but I feel like walking into this kind of environment, I have so many ideas that I want to put into place and that kind of meeting with other people who do the same thing that I do and things that I think I, I haven't realized that I've missed, that kind of thing. So it's, um, it's definitely that is... I, I want to make sure that those skills, I'm honing those skills on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Are there skills that you kind of, uh, you mentioned bookkeeping and stuff like that that were difficult for you to kind of get a handle on? Were there any other things that kind of took you so, off work? Yeah, thing? bookkeeping and me are not best friends, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, math in general has never been my forte. Um, so I, 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 I hire a bookkeeper and an accountant to make sure that everything I'm doing is correct. Um, I am, and I didn't do that until about two years in, which I had an accountant, but not a, not a bookkeeper. But my bookkeeper is my best friend, <laughs> and not in real life, but, um, she is seriously the person I go to when I have any issues because I, again, you don't know what you don't know and owning a business is it's a whole other set of of things that a learning curve that you've got to kind of hit right Mm -hmm. so I uh, math and me my mother jokes still to this day the only class that I've ever failed is my personal finance course and it's true I'm not I'm not good at that I need to that's something that I had to work on right from the get-go with this so I actually did online book bookkeeping courses just uh, and nothing that was, you know, graded or anything, just like a, a whole thing online that would tell me what a ledger was and how to balance things. I didn't even know that. So those are the kinds of things that I felt like I had to kind of get under control. So I had to do that. I had to kind of go through and make sure that I had skills in terms of 
um, HR. There's so many things you don't know. And those kind of, you know, health and safety board, I had no idea, you know. So when the government of Ontario walks in the door and says, are you compliant? I'm like, yes, I know what I'm doing and I can hand him a file. The, mm -hmm. And those those things you don't know. So, and you don't even know to ask about those things. So thank goodness for our head office that can kind of go through and say you need to have a privacy um policy. You have to have a board that has all your HR stuff on it, that kind of, you know, health and safety, all of that. I, I'm really thankful for that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And other than working, you know, like running your own business, yeah. um, do you ever actually deal with the students that come into your business in terms of actually tutoring them or helping them with their schooling? Yep, I do that still too. That's my choice. I probably shouldn't be doing it as much as I do. Um, I have a student that I work with on a regular basis once a week um, who is um, autistic. So he and I work um, in a separate room together, and he's learning math. So I work on that with him. Um, but, yes, I still try to get my fingers in there every once in a while because I really do enjoy the students. But, like, I'm not unapproachable at all. I'm out there when kids come in, and I'm ridiculous and I like to have fun, and sometimes I'll dance or I'll sing or do whatever. That's really important to me to be approachable, not just by my staff, but my, by my students too, and they all know, you know, they can chat with me. On Saturday morning, I, I sat down with a student, with a couple of students, actually, and we talked about study skills, and I'll be the first to admit, I didn't have great study skills when I was in high school, so passing on those kinds of, of, of learning skills for them and, and a and, and experiences is kind of ideal because I can say, you know, you don't want to be like me. You don't want to kind of go through school thinking, oh, this is so easy. And suddenly you get to grade 12 and you're like, oh, my God, this is really hard. Right. right. Those kind of I really like to share my experiences. And I'm older than most of the teachers here. I'm not old, but I'm older. And uh, <laughs> as I like to say, some of them guess me at 60 and some of them guess, guess me at 20. So, you know, I like the kids that guess 20. Um, but uh, I I uh, I really do like to be approachable by them, and I want to make sure that they 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 enjoy coming here for sure. That's a big deal for us is to have fun while you're here. Yeah, for sure. Sounds like you have to take like a, a you you have to have, like we mentioned you have to have a lot of passion for this business and take a lot of initiative to because you work like crazy hours and stuff like that, and it's you can't just like let the business you know run itself. I think that's like a lot of like the big misconception with franchising is that we. Yeah. That that you just kind of go into it and you the business will just kind of do its thing and you can sit back and relax but you're absolutely I don't think that you can honestly do that unless you've got a million people working for you and you're okay mm -hmm. with paying a million people too um, mm -hmm. I think I think with running your own business you have to be in there for a certain extent to a, mm -hmm. a certain ex extent because what I can't I, I wouldn't feel good about myself just letting somebody else make all the decisions. I want to be in there. It's my business. I'm the one that is ultimately accountable for all of this. So I want to make sure that what the program that I'm giving, the, the customer service that we're giving, is the best that it can be, for sure. That's really yeah. important. Yeah, and, and you, I know you, you, you mentioned like head office has been, you know, very supportive and helped you like along the way and stuff like that. Um, have you, like, how is the support from your fellow franchisees? And do you also, I guess, you know, you're five years into the business, kind of help new franchisees as well? Yeah, actually, I, they, our head office contacts me quite a bit to be kind of the first um, franchise that um, that new potential franchisees come and check out. So I've had a couple of different new people coming in and, and visiting our center. First of all, our center is beautiful, so we love to show it off. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm a pretty positive person, and my center runs very, very efficiently and effectively. So I, I do like to show off how good we are. <laughs> wow, that sounds so conceited. I don't mean it to sound like that, but um, but we are. This is a strong franchise, and and we we do things by the book, which has a lot to do with our success. The program that that we've created is also one that. Um, is sustainable if you follow the rules and so we do that for sure and I mean we do regional workshops where we have 
um, centers from the surrounding area all gather and, and either the center directors and the education directors and sometimes the coordinators all get together and share best practices, go through, you know, different ways of training to help develop all of us. Um, and I'm really, really big on, on the training that Oxford Learning does provide us from our head office as well. We do constant webinars. They're always developing curriculum. Um, those kinds of things are huge. And that center director retraining that I did last week was so good because I feel like I've got kind of the new ideas. We went through accounting and financing, how to use QuickBooks. That kind of thing is so important. There was a ton of things that I learned on QuickBooks that I didn't even know existed and mm -hmm. reports that I can automatically email to myself and um, how to track my expenses a little bit more efficiently. All those things that take me less time in the grand scheme of things too. So I can spend more time on planning for my business and doing the overarching themes of things instead of the, the nitty, nitty gritty, I keep saying that, but the little bitty things that, you know, you don't really want to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis too. And do you serve the whole region of Guelph and or beyond as well? So we do all of Guelph. We have some kids that come from Fergus um, and uh, Elora, but not as much. Um, I think we had some kids from um, Aaron last year as well. So, um, yeah, we do, like, maybe 20 minutes outside of Guelph as well, but we, we do serve as all of Guelph. Cool. And what would you say a typical day is like for you? I would, I would imagine that it changes every day, but is there any consistency? Yep, there is. Um, so I walk in between 8.30 and 9 usually in the morning, um, and I deal with any phone calls, voicemails, emails, um, anybody who walks in during that time. This morning, for example, I did an assessment um, with a, a younger, a little guy who isn't quite old enough to do our regular assessment yet. Um, so, and that... Uh, I really enjoy doing these assessments. I'm the first person the kids meet, so I make sure I'm super peppy in the morning or whenever they're doing it. Um, we try to have a, a, a pretty good time, so the kids really want to come back. Um, I I'll, What else do I do during the day? Um, for instance, from 12 to 2 today, we had our big quarterly meeting between my team and I. Um, so we went through kind of what we wanted. As a lot of the stuff that we learned, I took away from last week, I brought to them to show them things that are upcoming, kind of new expectations. Um, we're changing our pricing a little bit, our pricing structure a little bit. So we went over that. Um, we, uh, I meet with my, my team players um, pretty pretty regularly as well, my key team players, uh, my two education directors. Um, I love the morning because it's nice and quiet. Um, it's only me in here usually until about 11 or 12, and I get a lot done, which is wonderful. I usually handle my bookkeeping. I kind of put in everything into QuickBooks, um, and then my bookkeeper comes and makes sure everything's correct. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then 3 o'clock, once that happens, uh, all the students come in and the place explodes with you know, fun and, and <laughs> noise. <laughs> and uh, we have a really good time here and the kids are all happy to be here. And sometimes I actually have to kick them out at the end of the day. Guys, you need to leave now. I want to go home. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a good spot. So that's kind of what a typical day looks like for us. I try to get out of here between six and seven. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So what time does your location close? Eight o'clock. So we're open for classes Monday to Thursday, three o'clock to eight o'clock, and then Saturdays nine to twelve. Um, I don't do anything here on Fridays other than PD days, um, and I sometimes take Fridays off. So honestly, mm -hmm. I I can't really even say that uh, that my job is like twelve hours a day every day because I do mm -hmm. often take Fridays off. And I don't know if you mentioned this, but what? How old do the kids have to be to start there? So we take them as early as 3 o'clock if they can sit at a table. So my location is a little bit different. Um, we used to run a little reader program during the day, which is kids from 3 years old to 4 or 5. And uh, But once the play-based all-day kindergarten started, that program really went by the wayside here. So we don't offer that program at all. If they are that age, they can start at an after-school time um, at a table with other kids. Um, okay a three to one ratio, but uh, we don't really offer any early early reader programs during the day. Everything's after school. And we have a fair number of those kids too. And we keep our kids for a long time as well. So it's nice. And are those, um, and then it goes up to grade 12? Uh, yeah. So we finish at the end of grade 12, but we do take uh, 
um, students who or I guess adults who are going back to school, uh, especially math, we do a lot of that. And we also run an SAT and an ACT program as well. So students that are looking to go to the states to go to university have to write the SAT or the ACT. Uh, so we do a prep program for that as well. Cool. Do you have a, a preference to an age group? Because I would imagine the younger kids would be a lot cuter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the young ones are cute, but the old ones have sass and they're so funny. So, you know, I love, I, I, there's not really a preference. My preference to teach is probably grade seven and eight. I love that age group, but they've yeah. gotten a lot sassier the older I get. So it's not as much fun. <laughs> <laughs> So I know you mentioned like some of this already, like you get, you get to pick your own schedule and stuff like that. But I mean, what are the biggest benefits of being a franchisee? Um, there's a lot of support that comes down from our head office. I, I really like the the way that things are are put into place for us so that things are easy to follow. Systems are easy to follow. That, to me, I don't want to have to create everything from scratch to have my own tutoring company. Why would I want to do that when Oxford Learning is out there and can make a name for me and I know that our program is solid? And, I mean, I looked at all of them, and I would never leave Oxford Learning. I just, I really do like it. But I think, too, um, I really, I love the autonomy of it at the same time. I I can, you know, take an afternoon off if I need to. That's nice. And I, I'm, I make my own decisions. I set my prices. I set, I set where I want to go. I mean, there's parameters, but at the same time, those are parameters I would want to stay in anyway because I'm in a franchise and I know that this is what is expected. So mm -hmm. I really do just like the way that everything is set up and laid out for me so that I can just come in and run the most effective program possible. Mm -hmm, for sure. And on that note, um, do you have any any exciting uh, news or upcoming events for your business? Yeah. Do you plan on maybe expanding to different locations one day, or are you content and happy in Guelph? So that's kind of an interesting question. When I was talking about moving this location, I still had um, some time left on my old lease. So I wasn't sure if I would keep that one open and then open the secondary location. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. But after doing a lot of soul searching. I know I'm the heart and soul of my business. I know that I can't be in two places at once. So do I really want to stretch myself out and be that, you know, open that second location or do something like that? I don't I don't know that I would be the most effective or as effective as I am in my own center, you know, running two of them. It, it, and parents do still rely on me. I'm the person that they go to, you know. So I don't think that I would ever well, I would never say never, but I don't think that that would be something that I would want to do in the long run. I would rather make this one the most solidly capable tutoring center in all of Guelph, you know, mm -hmm. and that would be, that's where, I, that's my goal. And I think we could take upwards of 200, 250 kids easily. Um, and we're sitting at about, uh, well, we're sitting between 120 or 130 right now, I think. So, you know, I, I can't see that I would want to do that, but I, again, never say never. I'm still young. Uh, unless you ask my <laughs> little kids, they might not say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. You know, yeah. you don't want to, you also want to be the face of your business. And I yeah. would not having more than one location. You're kind of trying to go from location to location, yeah. or you're only at one location one week and then the other, the other week. So it's, it definitely be more difficult. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's so important to me to be that person who is there for those kids. And I mean, kids, they need somebody who believes in them. And I know these kids inside and out, every single one of them. And that to me is so much more important than having a second location and, and being, you know, I don't know, strong in, in too many different directions. <laughs> For yeah. sure. You sound like you're very passionate about, you know, the business and, and about the kids and it seems very genuine and stuff like that. So it's really cool that mm -hmm. you're helping so many, so many kids. It's, it's yeah. great. It's a rewarding feeling for sure. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I do that for that feeling for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So Kim, on that note, are you ready for some franchise fun? Yes. <laughs> You're hesitant. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> so we're gonna ask you um, a few questions, and if you just answer them with one answer, maybe a couple or one like one word, word or a couple of okay. words. Um, All right. 
Yeah, and it'll just be a quick lightning round. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the most interesting thing I've done recently is? I went to Disney. <laughs> oh, fun. I'm such a Disney nerd. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, that's my dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of funny because this is totally not lightning round at all, but um, we do a thing called um, uh, throw the fish around, which is kind of, you know, if somebody does something right, we throw a fish. So I was so excited to go to Disney because I bought a stuffed Nemo and a stuffed flounder and a stuffed, I can't even remember who else I have over there, all these uh, Disney fish things, and we throw those around um, to say, oh, look at who's working so hard over there, and I throw them a fish, or that kid just answered a right, the question right, and I throw them a fish, you know, making it matter, making it fun for the kids. So I brought Disney back to the kids. <laughs> a good franchisee is? Patient. A good franchisor is? Knowledgeable. Uh, the most important thing in life is? Fun. Hmm. My favorite drink is? Oh, I'm so boring. Water. <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's not boring at all. If I That's can... healthy. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like a big bottle of it sitting right here that I've been sipping through all day. Good Lord. <laughs> if I could meet anyone, it would be? Uh, Oprah Winfrey. Oh. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be, I think that's on everyone's like yeah. Yeah. Oprah. Canadian franchising is oh, um, exciting. Mm, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. My personal motto is uh, listen and be positive and enjoy life. Good one. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, one necessary item on my life's to-do list is? My life to-do list. Oh, you know, I don't really have a life to-do list. I feel like I take things as it comes, and I want to, I just want to be the best that I can be. And that's mm -hmm. kind of my motto, and that's kind of, oh, that one's hard. That's hard, too hard. I, I pass. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. If so, we've been asking most of our franchisees, I think we missed one. But can you redefine failure? Redefine failure. Always learning. Mm -hmm. Always learning. That's great. That is great. That, there's no really, there's really no such thing as failure. It's all about what you take from not achieving what you wanted, and then go forward from there. Mm. I like it. That's. Yeah, that's good inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, thanks, Ken. And for what it's worth, I think you sounded like in your late twenties when you first came yes. on the phone. I Thank ask you. <laughs> but I was like, oh, this girl is young. <laughs> I am, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm just immature, baby. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been really good. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you for uh, joining us. It's great. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Again. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye now. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn more, visit FranchiseCanada.online. And if you're interested in the franchise opportunity, go to lookforfranchise.ca.